Who was picking up these signals around 1932? A few receivers that we had placed around in important, important locations, our important homes uh, around New York. One receiver placed in Bernard Baruch's house was important because he invited a number of important friends to come in to see television for the first time. They were flabbergasted, but uh, they would come, of course, to Bernard Baruch invited them, and they did come. I was there. I put on, I put on the demonstration. And these are some of the top industrialists of the country, and they were flabbergasted. What would they see? In that case, we merely had somebody down to the Empire State Building acting as though they were actresses. They weren't, they weren't high, high grade actresses. But they could see that they actually were, without doubt, watching people elsewhere, that it wasn't a fake. Uh, it served its purpose. Were there suspicions that it was a fake? I wouldn't be surprised if some of them entered the room thinking, thinking that, but they didn't leave the room thinking that. And the actor would simply stand and talk before the yeah, light? talk or smoke or move or something, just enough to show <clears throat> that, that it was genuine, that he was doing something in front of a camera. Now, the, the person had to stand under very hot very, light. Very hot light, yes. Yeah. One problem with, <clears throat> with follow Farns, Farnsworth's invention of one aspect of television, and he does have a patent of some value, whereas practically all the other patents in the world belong to, belong to RCA on television. But he, uh, he, his system required about a hundred times more light than the, than the, let's call it the Zworkin method. So hot that people couldn't stand it more than a few fraction of a minute. Uh, the finish on the outside of musical instruments was starting to boil off. Uh, that was impractical, too much light, too much heat. But I know from talking to people in the RCA studios in the 30s, too, they also, the iconoscope also required quite a bit of light. That, that's right, that's right. But Farnsworth's method required 100 times more than that. Wow. Which was just, just intolerable. Was Bernard Baruch excited about the development of television? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, he, he, uh, I don't know what he did about it. He, uh, he was a tremendous financier, as you know. But he was obviously very interested, and that's why he had set up this a uh, meeting of important people in his residence to uh, give Sarnoff a place to demonstrate it. Why do you think he was demonstrating it to these important people? In the long run, they'd be the ones to set up radio companies, radio manufacturing, uh, programming, um, the theater operation, uh, a future in our entire culture. And I think Bernard Baruch was smart enough to see that. And so they were already seeing this in 1932, 1933, That's 1934. Right. Yes. Were sets in other homes as well? People could, could not, it wasn't like mechanical TV. You could not build your own electronic no, set. No, no. So who else would have TV sets in those Very days? few at that time. We had a few put out just because we wanted to show that it worked under certain conditions and in certain locations. Uh, but very few, I, I, I really, I'm not sure. We may have had 50 receivers out around New York City. How much broadcasting would you do a week, maybe? Very, very limited, very limited uh, and very variable schedule. Hmm. Probably several hours a week is the thing to say. Now, do you recall something which may have been one of the first news shows, which was a fire? Well, down in Camden, it just happened to, <coughs> that uh, when the engineers were experimenting with one of our newer television cameras, right across the street, sort of in an alley, a garage caught on fire. So the engineer aimed the camera out of the window and took a picture of the fire. And that was said to be the first time that, uh, that the TV had been used in the field to televise uh, a fire or other catastrophe. Hmm. Otherwise, would they often poke the camera out the window and just show the traffic or anything? I, I think so. Anything to show motion and see how it works and what the light requirements are and so forth. And this would go to, again, these receivers in the field, various receivers Yes, and there the weren't field. many receivers in, but still it could be claimed to be an outside pickup. Hmm. Did the general have a receiver in his home? I do not know. I'm sure he did, but I, I didn't see it. Hmm. He well, had a wonderful receiver in his private office in the RCA building concealed in the wall. First time I'd seen a receiver in the wall and only the screen was visible. Everything else not a button you would press would control everything behind the wall. Very cleverly done. How large was the screen of those very early experimental receivers? Oh, some were very small. The, T the TRK-10, which is the receiver that sold in greatest quantity, had a 10-inch screen. 
the one that Sarnoff had in the wall of his private office was considerably larger. What about the one that you installed in Bernard Baruch's home? Uh, ten inch. Hmm. And we think today of a, 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 a snap tuner, you know, on the different channels. How yes. did one tune a receiver in those days? Uh, it was the same way. A little, little more difficult to manufacture the different tuned circuits for each point on the, for each channel. But that's the way it was done. Did they broadcast on a specific channel? Yes. Uh, channel 4? Well, I, I'm yeah. not sure the channels had numbers at that time. Uh, I really don't know. They first broadcast on the only channel available for TV, whatever it was. And it had to be at a certain frequency uh, not to interfere with radio, correct? Well, uh, they used it, uh, the uh, broadcast from the Empire State Building, which were the first really worthwhile experimental broadcasts. Uh, we're on a channel not used by any any other service at all. There were no no trouble from that viewpoint. Mm -hmm. It was up in the ultra high frequency, and all radio broadcasting was on much lower frequencies.